Hi, this is Simon Obstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this loader effect. Now this is something I saw on Behance and I thought this was a really nice looking effect and I wondered how one might go about doing it in motion. And here is the result. So let's get started. So first of all, let's do a quick check on our project setup. So 1920, 1080, 25 frames a second, and I've got a duration of 30 seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down, I'm going to select the circle tool and holding down the shift key, I'm going to draw out a circle. Let's center it up. So coming over here, let's have no fill and an outline width of 10. Then let's come over to the geometry and let's have a radius of 70. Then let's duplicate that circle. So right click duplicate. So this radius is going to be 90. And let's come back to style. Let's turn on fill, turn off outline. So the fill color wants to be 15% gray. And then let's have a feather of negative 25. And then I'm going to add to this new circle a circular mask. So holding down the shift key, draw out a circular mask. Let's set that radius to 70. And then just make sure we've centered it up. So now what we've got, if we zoom in, you can see we've kind of got a soft edge going into the, the main outline like that. So I'm going to rename this group as circle. And then from it, I'm going to make a replicator. So I'm going to come to object, replicate. So I'm going to switch the shape to line. I'm going to have 24 points. I want to turn on 3D and I'm going to open up the angle and set the Y angle to 90. So then let's come down to the color mode and set that to over pattern. And then from the drop down menu here, the gradient selecting selection menu, I'm going to scroll down till I find rainbow, which is one of the presets. You should have this. So let's open up that gradient and it gives us this rainbow, rainbow spread. But actually I wanted to slightly change this up. So I'm going to move these two out of the way like this. I'm going to move this one all the way over here and I'm going to bring the red in to join it like that. And then I'm going to click this little button here and you'll see that that evenly spaces them. So you can see we've got that rainbow spread across our replicator. So then let's talk about the animation. With the replicator selected, I am going to come to behaviors parameter and I'm going to select custom. Now you probably don't use this very much. It's actually quite a useful option here. So first of all, I need to add some parameters. So I'm going to add object shape parameters, start point X. And I'm also going to add object shape parameters, end point X. So then I would need to make sure I'm at the first frame of the sequence. And I'm going to hit a keyframe for both the start and the end. And then I'm going to set the values as follows. So the start point is going to be negative 50 and the end point is going to be positive 50. Then I'm going to come to one second on the timeline and we'll set some new keyframes. So the start point is going to be 150 and the end point is going to be 500. What I actually need to do is I need to turn off the custom tool and I just reset those two start and end points. Otherwise I'm adding to the existing values. So now let's turn it back on again and that's going to be better. So let me come back to the custom parameter. Let's come to two seconds and let's again set some keyframes. So for the start, I'm going to have negative 50 and for the end, I'm going to have positive 50. And then I'm going to come to three seconds start point negative 500, end point negative 150. And then I'm going to come to four seconds. 
start point, negative 50, end point 50. So let's see what's happened there. So we go boing, boing, and back to the middle. So next we need to come to the keyframe editor and just apply a bit of smoothing to this. So show in keyframe editor. Uh, we're here where it says untitled set. Let's select animated, which will give us the animated curves. Let's turn off the view for the replicator itself. We don't need to see that. So I'm going to draw around both of those there, the one, the work those at one second, and I'm going to set the smoothing to ease both. And these two here at three seconds also set to ease both. And that's just going to make those bounce points smoother like that. Nice. And then what I want to do is I want to get this animation to loop indefinitely. So I'm going to come to start point X, right click here and select after last keyframe repeat. And what that will do is just loop that. And we can do the same thing with the end point. Let's after last keyframe repeat. If I zoom out here, you can see how that pattern is just looping itself after the keyframes are finished and it's looping nicely. And we've got that interesting kind of bouncing animation. So that's good. Let's close down the keyframe editor. So to make this a little bit more interesting and less sort of flat, I'm going to come to the replicator's rotation and select the Y rotation, right click, add parameter behavior, oscillate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have an amplitude of 15 and a speed of 15. And that speed will hopefully now match the, um, the rest of the animation. You can see that we're sort of seeing the the whole tube sort of more side on as it as it uh, expands. And it's kind of a bit more interesting if I turn that on and off. That's sort of really rather flat looking. And that's giving us much more sort of um, 3D to it. And it's a bit of a cheat, but it kind of works, I think. So to this replicator, I'm going to add filters, blur and Gaussian blur. I'm going to set the amount to 24 and the vertical amount to zero because I just want this horizontal blur like that just kind of fills out the tube a little bit more, I think. And then I'm also going to add filters, color, open EXR tone map, and I'm going to set the exposure to four, which obviously just brightens it up because the, the blur was kind of dulling it down a bit. So now we've got a much more punchy result. So the next thing I want to do is to make a reflection. So I'm going to duplicate this replicator, right click duplicate, and I've renamed that as replicator reflection. So let's come over to properties. I want to rotate it through 180 degrees on X, and then I want to bring it down on Y to negative 150. And now that's a nice little reflection, but obviously it's much too bright. So let's reduce its opacity down to 25%. So I also want to have the bottom of the reflection fade off so it's not complete. Uh, now I can't add an image mask directly to the replicator. So what I'm going to have to do is make a new group above it, put it into the group, and then I can use the rectangular mask tool to draw the mask that I want. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to draw it like that so it's in fact excluding the reflection. So it's there on the baseline of the main object. And then I can come over to the mask and just set its feather to something like 150, maybe even 100, I think. And then it's, it's got that nice, that nice fade off. So I've renamed the master group as rings and that reflection group is called reflection. Let's close everything down for the time being. And actually let's put that circle inside that master group just to tidy it away. And now I want to make a new group to hold the frame. So object new group. So into this new group, I'm going to import my circuit board background from my assets folder. Now this is an image that I found on pexels.com and I'll put a link to that in the uh, description. So first of all, let's scale it up. I'm going to go for 56%, so it fills the frame. 
And I want to add a colorize filter. So color, colorize. And let's set the black to black. So no brightness. And let's remap white. I'm going to actually just type in some numbers here. 0.2 for the red, 0.2 for the green, and 0.45 for the blue. And then I want to make a cutout so we can see our rings through this frame. So I'm going to come down to the rectangle tool and roughly draw out a rectangle like that. Doesn't matter too much about it other than that we need to reset it like that. So let's come over to shape, geometry, size, and let's set the width to 1100 and the height to 275. And let's also set the roundness to 75. Let's come back over to the style. Now I want to fill here and I'm going to make the fill 100% red. So I'm going to come to RGB, uh, pull down the other two sliders like that. And then the outline I'm going to set to 100% green. So pull down the blue and the red and push the green all the way up. And that outline width of eight is good. It'll be obvious why we've just selected these colors in a moment. So first of all, let's just turn it off. We don't need to see that. I'm going to add an image mask to this circuit board. So right click, add image mask. I'm going to use the rectangle as the source and I'm going to select red as the color and I'm going to invert it. So now we've got our cutout for the, for the circuit board. What I also want to do though, is I want to have a, an edge to the cutout. So I'm going to come over to the library, generators, and I'm going to bring in a color solid above the circuit board. And I'm going to right click, add image mask. And again, let's use the rectangle as the source, but this time we're going to use the green. And you see that's just picked out the outline there. So rather handily there, with, with our two colored rectangle, we've actually created a single mask for both of those operations. So I just want to come to this color and just finesse it a bit more. So let's go for 0.3 on red and green and 0.5 on blue. So I've renamed that group as frame. So now it's time that we added a light. Uh, now this is often a, a problematic process and I'm going to show you what I mean by that imminently. So add object light, switch to 3D as we need to, and then we get this error message. One or more masks have been disabled. Shape masks can only be applied to 2D groups or flattened 3D groups. So we need to find what the problem is there. And actually it's that reflection. So if we come down here, you'll see that all the groups have been made 3D. And this rectangular mask has been disabled because that reflection group is 3D. So we don't need it to be 3D. We can turn it back to 2D and now we can re-enable the mask. And while we're here, I think I'd like a little bit more of a fade off there. So I'm going to select the mask, just move it up a little bit like that, probably quite a long way, and then just increase that feather a little bit more as well. Something like that is probably quite good. So the other issue with the lighting is that we don't want either the reflection or the main rings to be actually part of the lighting. So I'm going to select that reflection group, or we could select the reflection layer, doesn't really matter, show lighting and turn it off. And let's do the same thing with the main replicator. So shading off. And now they're back to being sort of light sources rather than lit by the lights. So the next thing I want to do is I want to create something in the background. So we're not just looking at black here. And into this rings group, I'm going to add from the library another color solid. Bring that in. And let's move it all the way to the back. So object center back. And let's come to properties. I want to move the anchor point down to negative 540. And I want to adjust the Y position to a negative 180. And then what I'm going to do is rotate it backwards. So negative 60 on X. And you can see how that's given us this really, really nice sort of gradient effect. 
because we're, we're tilting that away from the light. But, and I just want to adjust that color. So let's come over. So let's set these numbers to 0 0.1, 0 0.1 and 0.15. So it's just this really nice subtle effect there. But it's also getting lit by that light as well. Just gives us this really nice sort of shiny effect. I turn that on and off. You see, that's really dull without it. And just that little extra detail really, really helps. In fact, I think I might just increase that blue value. Let's go for 0.2 instead. Just go a little bit richer in there. So let's now close everything up. And I want to make another new group that I'm going to put all of this into. So the frame and the rings, put that inside there and call this group all. So then I'm going to fish down inside the rings group and I'm going to select the replicator, right click, make clone layer. And I'm going to drag this out to the top there of the all group I'm going to just reset that Y rotation like that. And then I'm going to open up the scale and set the Y scale to 210. It'll become obvious in a moment why I'm doing that. And I'm going to set the blend mode to add and the opacity I'll bring down to around 30%. Then I want to mask this. So I'm going to right click add image mask and I'm going to use the rectangle from that frame group there. So drag that into the source there. And again, what we want to use here is the green. So we're just using the edge there. Then I want to select the clone filters, blur, Gaussian blur. I'm going to set this amount to something like 85 just so we've softened that all off. So this is just going to be a kind of a lighting effect. And I also want to blur the image mask itself. So select the image mask, blur, Gaussian blur. And I think that default is just about enough. So it just lets it spill over a little bit for, uh, over the edges of the, of the mask. And I think also I want to have this affected by the lighting. And um, because of the way we've made it, it's the shading is off. So let's turn it on again. And that's just a little bit more subtle because it's it's just being influenced by the lighting as well. So I think I might just pump that up to about 50. Like that, that's good, I think. So one of the things I've forgotten to do is to animate that light. Uh, let's come to its position. I think I actually want to set its Z position to be 50. So it's a little bit closer to everything. And that's that already, you can see that's that's quite a lot better. And then I want to add an oscillate behavior to the X position. So add parameter behavior, oscillate. And let's set the amplitude to 400 and the speed to 15, which should have it matching the animation of the rest of it. So that, that's looking like this. And with that light animation, I think it really starts to come together. And the only thing I would add is that you might well want to increase the intensity of this light. So let's try something like 400 and you might find that that's probably a better option. So there you go, that's the effect. Uh, there's plenty more you could do to, to finesse it, but I think uh, that's just shown you a fair few tricks. So thanks very much indeed for watching. I hope to see you again on the next one.